I'm Phil. And I'm Star. And together we are My, My Silk, Silk Art. Art. Yeah. Hi, this is Star from Mayu Silk Art here at our studio warehouse in Huntington Beach, California. Normally, this place is a bustling hub of activity as students of our business classes and workshops, as well as visitors from all over the world, come together to explore and experience the joy of water marbling. What exactly is the art of water marbling? That can be difficult to describe, but it is easy for me to show you. So in this virtual session, I will be showing you some of the techniques and tools of the trade, as well as exploring some fun things that you can do at home using materials that you probably already have on hand. You see that floating, did you? Mm -hmm. You, you thought it was going to be no one else. I can tell. Funny. I think this is it. Marbling is a time-honored art with roots in Japan, where it's called suminagashi, and in Turkey, where it's called ibru. We have many of the traditional designs on display here at the Mayu Silk Art Studio, and they are gorgeous. But sometimes folks want something a little more abstract, like this, surf's up, dude. We're gonna explore all of these patterns in this demonstration. But to be honest, every time we come to the marbling tray, something different happens. The designs are never the same. Um, you're working on a water surface and everyone's gonna have a different way of um, applying the paints, using the tools and creating the design. And in fact, I don't even know. Um, I got no idea where this is going, but we'll do it together. It's gonna be fun. So the first thing that I'm going to do is skim the tray to set the surface tension. This is an important step that a lot of beginners uh, skip and it can cause all kinds of problems later. And then I'm going to apply the paints. At Mayu Silk Art, we have one rule. Don't squeeze the bottle. This is very important because you want the paint to fall one drop at a time. And I have started with white, but you could start with any color that you like. Um, white is probably the color we use the most um, because we like to start with it. But you could start with any color. And you can see that the paint, um, as it spreads, it becomes more pale and it wants to fill the whole tray, which is what we want to. So we're just gonna keep at applying paint until the tray is full, but we also want those colors to be vibrant. So as the drop spreads, you can see it pushes the color before away. So right now this um, beige color is pushing the white away and as we continue, the white will become more white and the beige will also become more vibrant. And I can put the colors anywhere that I want. If I want a color to be um, just not very much of it, I might want to do it as an early color because the last colors 
are going to push the previous colors into smaller spaces. So usually the last color is the predominant one, but you can control some of that by the, how many drops you put. most simple of all of our tools is a, just a stick. Um, we call it a stylus, but you could call it a skewer. Um, and with a stick, we're just going to draw through the color that's floating on the surface of the water. So for instance, anytime that you have a circle, if you draw a line through it, you get a heart. If you do a dot to dot, you're going to get a string of hearts. Or it could be a vine. Um, you could also just close your eyes and literally let the water do the art for you. So you just move the stick through the water and it can create the design for you. You can do flowers, you can do butterflies, you can do fish, you can do stars. Um, those are a little more complex. I'll show you some of that um, at the end. Now, we do want to be sure when we're working on silk that we have plenty of paint. And we have a drying time. Um, as the paint sits on the surface of the water, it's very thin and it has water underneath and it has air moving across the surface of it. And especially if we're working outdoors, like when we go to the Huntington Beach Pier, we have a time limit that's set by the environment. Um, it's not up to us, it's up to Mother Earth to decide that. So um, we always try to make sure that we keep moving uh, forward. We don't spend too much time thinking about where the colors are going, um, just that they are getting on there. So I'm adding more paint because I wanna be sure I have enough paint to get nice rich color onto the silk. Now you'll see some colors are more transparent than others, um, but they're all good colors. Not a bad color combination yet that I've seen. So once I have enough paint on the tray, I'm gonna play with some of the other tools that we have at our disposal. Just a little bit more. Looks like the colors are not spreading anymore, so that's a sign that we do have enough paint on the tray to get good vibrant color on the silk. Working on paper, you could go with a lot less paint, but with um, silk, it requires a good amount of paint. So let's see what happens. Sometimes I have to pop bubbles. I do that with a stick or with my finger. Look what happens when we draw many pins through the tray all at once. It changes the paint quickly. So it does the same thing that the stylus did, but it does it a whole lot faster. like it, that's the time to stop because you can never go back to this one. Remember, every design is unique. So if I love this, this will be the time to stop. But for this purpose, um, I want to show you all of the tools. So I do love it, but I'm going to keep going. Hope that I'm on your mind. You're certainly on mine. Now what's that you're sipping on? Can I buy you another round? Take a listen to that sound. Let the treble and bass take us both away. Whoa! Here we go. And we're moving like we never moved before. Whoa! Oh, 
yes, I'm the one that you've been looking for. Well, now can you feel the beat pounding inside you? And can you feel the heat burn you alive? We're spinning in circles, the whole world's a blur as our lips lock to the word. Every tool has different um, designs that it can do. When you're here with us, you don't need to know all that. Um, we can look at a design that you like and use that as inspiration. We'll show you how the tools work, but you would be um, able to manipulate them and move them in the way that is most pleasing to you. Um, now, I told you I'd show you some of the floral patterns that um, come to us from the Ebrew technique. So I'm not going to spend too much time because my paint, remember, is drying while I'm talking and while I'm doing the art. So I don't want to take too long. And we're moving like we never moved before. One more, take the floor. You see, I'm the one that you've been looking for. Yes, I'm the one that you've been looking for And we're moving like we never moved before You see, I'm the one that you've been looking for get tired of this because every time it's going to be something new and different so I think that's it I love it the way it is so now we're going to print it onto a piece of silk It is so much fun to do this. Every time it's going to be something different. Wow. All right, so I'm going to rinse that in a bucket and um, then I'm going to hang it to drip dry. Once it's good and dry, I'm going to iron it with a hot iron that will set the color so that it's sun safe and washable. So there is the Mayu Silk Art process of watermark. Vibrant, yeah. On the yeah. Oh, exactly. yeah. yeah, yeah, the colors just really pop. <laughs> so, bring your hands together, walk it down straight up and keep it above the tray. One, two, three. Birthday girl, smile. <laughs> oh, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's so cool. Wait, I should get the logo. Oh, could you take a <laughs> Well, thank Love you. you.
Painting on silk requires specialized equipment and tools, but I'm gonna show you two processes that you can do at home that don't require any of that fancy stuff using household products that you probably already have. I'll show you some of the things we might be able to do. Um, these are some things that I made using the water marbling process like you'll be doing today at home. And here's some samples. Fun stuff. To begin with, we we'll want to prepare your work area. I have um, some uh, paper that I've lined it with. You can also use foil or a towel. And then you might want to have a hand towel for wiping your hands. You might want uh, paper towels, just in case. And it's optional. You might want to wear gloves. Um, I'm not gonna be wearing them, but sometimes folks prefer to wear gloves so that you don't get paint uh, or food coloring on your hands. And then you've got some basic tools that we're gonna use for both processes. That would include something um, for drawing and swirling through the paints. I like to use skewers. These are super duper cheap, but any kind of stick will work. Uh, you could use a toothpick if that's easier. Um, and, or even just like plastic, silverware and stuff like that. That's fun to use and it's fun to explore what you can use. Um, some other things you might need would be droppers and water. Um, I use a bowl of water for rinsing my tools as I'm working. And then you'll need something to paint on. I like to use uh, plain copy paper or you know whatever you have laying around. You can use wood. Um, these are just clothes pins, pieces of wood you have laying around, um, a picture frame from Michaels. This costs only a dollar and they're really fun to paint on. Um, one of my favorite things to paint is seashells. These um, came from Huntington Beach. My granddaughter and I picked these up a few months ago um, from the beach and they work really well. They're beautiful when they're painted. Um, today, we'll be using paperboard coasters. These are just really inexpensive coasters that I buy on Amazon. Um, you can probably find them at craft stores, but Amazon's super easy. Um, and I'll be happy to send you a link to the coasters if you'd like to have one. These are very popular at our parties and here in our studio, as well as events um, offsite. Now, of course, we can't forget the paint. Um, so we've got to have some color in all this. Uh, you can use fluid acrylics. That's what I'll be using today. Um, they're really um, wet paints that are about the consistency of milk or heavy cream. You can use any brand you want. Um, you can use oil paints, you can use watercolors, but you do want to be sure that you've thinned it down to the consistency of milk or heavy cream so that it's drippy when you go to put it um, on your surface. First um, process that we're going to be using is um, we're going to use shaving cream and we're going to use the paper plate to hold the shaving cream and we're gonna use the water for rinsing our tools, which will include a spatula or a stick for um, smoothing the shaving cream, and then a squeegee or another stick for scraping the item after it's painted. You can also use uh, food coloring for this particular process, for the first process. Food coloring will work uh, or paint. And then for the second process that I'm going to show you, we'll be using water and oil. I've got cooking oil, but any kind of oil should work. Uh, baby oil, um, whatever you've got. Oil is oil. And we'll be using that. Um, and for that, I'll be using a dropper to drip the paint, I mean the oil, into the paint. So I think I've got everything ready to start.
I will confess that I haven't done a lot of marbling using shaving foam, but I have had a lot of fun in the little time that I've been trying this one out. It is really neat. And I think you'll find that the children really enjoy this, but anybody can do it. It's a lot of fun. So be sure you're using the shaving foam. You wanna shake it really well. And then you're going to put it into your uh, tray. Now it could be a cookie sheet, it could be a paper plate like I'm using. I like the paper plate because I can toss it, but if you wanna be more um, environmentally correct, use a cookie sheet. So you're gonna just put it into the tray. And you're gonna use a lot of this stuff. The good thing is this is super cheap. So you wanna get a good amount into your tray and it's gonna expand while it's sitting in there. And there's a lot of air pockets. So um, I'm gonna try and fill. Probably work better this way, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, that works way better. So I learn as we learn together. So that's what, pretty much what it's like. And then I'm gonna spread to get as smooth a surface as I can. I don't have to overthink this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Think of it kind of as frosting a cake. It's very, very much like that, or whipped cream or something. So once I've got most of the bubbles worked out of it and a fairly smooth surface, then I'll start applying the paints. This is so satisfying just doing this. All right, and then once I'm done with my tools, I'm gonna put them into the water so they can um, be rinsed. All right, so I've got some colors picked out and I'm just gonna start dripping it on to the shaving foam. And you can do it randomly any way that you want. You can put lots of color or just a few colors. I have found that using a lot of color seems to work better for me, but um, it's up to you. This is a place where your artistry and your sense of um, composition comes into play. Um, the only rule we have here at Mayu Silk Art is don't squeeze the bottle. That would be true for this as well. You don't want to apply so much paint that it is all piled up on itself. Try to do one drop at a time. Um, same with the food coloring. You don't want to put the whole bottle in there. Do it one drop at a time. You can always add more if you decide you need more. So there we go. Just sprinkling it around until I like the way that it looks. I'm going to add a pop of yellow. And you'll notice that I am spreading my dots out um, to minimize how much they blend together. On the shaving foam or when the drops are um, sitting together, the colors will blend somewhat, um, unlike water marbling on the tray that we usually do when we're marbling on silk. So I'm pretty satisfied with this. I think it looks really pretty. I'm gonna put a little pop of coral in there for fun. And ooh, look at that, love it. Okay. This is just so satisfying. I could do this all day long. Now I could leave it just like that if I want to. If I um, want something, you know, looks like confetti, boom. I could be done, but I'm going to play around with some of the tools. So I'll be using a skewer and just kind of drawing back and forth, or I might want to go the other way. I can go around in circles. I can have all kinds of fun with doing um, the designs. Now I can really stir and get a whole different kind of effect if I want to. So. I'm going to show you some of uh, the more detailed, so less detail, more detail, um, fun stuff on the end of my stick I don't know what to do with, so I'm just going to put that into my rinse bowl, and I'm going to go ahead and print this because I like it. Actually, let me, yeah, leave those spots. So I'm going to do this one on a piece of cardstock. So I've got just this plain cardstock. 
actually it's not quite as big. Oh, I'll go ahead and do a coaster. Where did my coasters go? Here they are. So with a coaster, um, it's hard. And so if you're not careful, when you lay it into the foam, you're gonna hit some air pockets. So what you wanna do is keep it at an angle. This is one reason for making sure your foam is deep. If it's too shallow, you won't be able to do that. So you wanna keep it at an angle as it goes into the tray. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I like this part, so I'm gonna, it a bit to try to make sure I don't have any air pockets. And it's going to look like that. Now that is beautiful and I could leave it just like that if I want to. Um, the back isn't painted so if I want to paint the back I can maybe find another area um, I do want it to be fairly flat, so I want to avoid um, any area where there's a big pocket of air. I'll just do it over here. I'm just going to flatten it like that. So that way. This is so much fun. All right, I'm going to go like this. out so I don't have any air bubbles. And there it is. Now I did miss a little spot so what I can do is just get some of that paint and dab it in there. All right now I'm going to move this away. I guess I should use should have used my tray but that's okay I'll just do it here on my work surface so I'm gonna take a stick and I'm gonna just scrape off the excess so I'm gonna do it this way and scrape it right into that tray now remember I left a lot of um, empty space between my drops so those areas did not paint if you want the whole thing to be painted, you might want to push your drops a little closer together when you're applying them. But there it is. Now as this dries, um, I could actually rinse it in some water after the paint has had a chance to soak in and it'll get rid of the excess um, shaving foam. But it's really pretty, um, very, um, abstract uh, but a lot of fun and then what I can do once it's thoroughly thoroughly dry I can spray it with a coat of um, Mod Podge or even clear glue uh, just brush it on with a paintbrush um, or any kind of clear coat polyurethane it might be a little bit too much but I like the Mod Podge it's um, a spray and it goes on easy do this outside not inside it's got some fumes or you can just skip that because they come out gorgeous. Um, so after this is set for about 15 minutes, I'm gonna give it a rinse and then I'm gonna let it dry. I like to use this wire rack. You can just set it on um, some hand towels or wherever, doesn't matter. Uh, just let it dry and then it should be good to go. Now you've seen what it looks like when we do this on shaving cream, but it's called water marbling for a reason. So we are going to marble directly on water. This is an example of one I did not too long ago when I had a little sleepless night and wanted just a bit of art therapy. I love doing this process. Um, because it's simple, it's easy, there's no mess, 
and I've got everything at home. And so if I'm by myself, it's really simple to set up and so beautiful. Love this art. Now there's two styles. This is just paint on water and this is using some oil in the process and it creates those bubbles. So lots of fun and I'm going to show you how we do it. You'll start with just a bowl of water. Now at the beginning of this class, I showed you how we skim the water. We're not going to do that with the plain water. We want as much surface tension as possible. So we're just going to leave it sitting there in the water. And then we're going to drop our paints, swirl it a little bit and print it. So you can start with any color you want. Um, I'm going to actually start with white because I think it's easier to clean off the edges of my bowl. And I just put a drop of paint in there. And it, even just that first drop is so cool to watch. Here's what happens when I put another color in. And I could stop right there. If you love it, that's the time to stop. That is super cool. Um, but I'm going to do some more. I love it already. And the red is just going to drop through. If that happens, try watering your paint down a little bit more. I'm just going to skip the red and grab a different color. There's a lot of science involved in water marbling. Um, surface tension being probably the most important thing to know, but viscosity of the paints is also a big factor in how they spread and how they interact with one another. We love working with school groups and Boy Scout groups and Girl Scout groups and others um, when we talk about the science and the history of marbling it is a fascinating topic let's do just a little bit more some of you may have done this on your fingernails um, that is also possible i'm not going to be showing you today because it's not a technique i've done very much but you can use nail polish uh, in a similar fashion on water now again, I could leave it just the way it is, or I can manipulate the paints. So um, remembering that water is very runny, I'm going to only use the very tip of my stylus, and I'm just going to use a minimal amount of motion through the paints to get it to swirl, because the water is going to carry it. And in those science classes, um, we do talk a lot about current as well, how water moves. Late at night, this is so much fun. I just love seeing how the paint and the colors come together. Now I did want to show you another technique um, that we didn't do in the shaving cream process. You can sprinkle paint onto your tray also. I like to use a, a paintbrush. Now this is going to end up all over my hands, so I'm going to wear a glove for this. But you can sprinkle the paint so that you get small droplets of paint on the water. skittering across the surface. Again, you want to be sure you're wearing an apron or you might end up with it all over the place. Um, let's see, I want a little more of this color. And some so I'll swirl it just a tad more and then we'll print. I was going to print it before, but I decided it needed more paint on the tree. I'm not going to worry too much about those bubbles. 
they can do their thing. They'll probably pop when I print this one. Swirl it just a little bit more. to print it. So I'm going to use a coaster and I'm just going to tip the coaster and go into the um, water. I'll do it this way so you can kind of get a better idea of how I'm dipping it. So I'll go this way. We'll go this way. Here we go. All the way under There it is. Now I'm going to let that sit for a bit to let the paint um, get into the paper because with the water it just is very runny. So um, I'm going to let that sit for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to rinse it in a bucket. Now I'm going to show you another process. Now first I'll have to get the paint that's in the tray off of there. So. I'm just going to lay a piece of paper towel on there and basically I'm printing to my paper towel now. And that will lift most of the paint out. Now it goes in the trash. I'm going to do it one more time because some of that paint's coming up from the bottom. Now with this technique you probably will want to replace your water. Um, probably every other print that you do um, because the paint is literally in the water and it can color your print. So just replace that water frequently. Um, so we're going to do the oil process. So I'm going to put some paint in. So fascinated by this I forget to talk but you probably like that I hope you're all having a wonderful week I'm really grateful to all things Orange County for letting me do this little class and it's been a lot of fun put some purple in there to float. Nope, teal just wants to sink. The turquoise will float. Wow, that really floated. All right, so I think I am ready to swirl. And take my stick and Move the paints around. You can also blow across the tray. I like to use a drinking straw and just blow the paint. That's a lot of fun. Um, you can try different tools, but with this water, it's so watery, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, but it is fun. And now I'm going to take the oil and you can do it with a dropper and just drop the paint on. Different oils will have different amounts of spreading. So um, if you want bigger drops, um, I think cooking oil will give you bigger drops, but I was working on such a small area, I decided to go with olive oil today. 
but you could use any kind. You could also take your um, a, a different toothbrush, not one that's got paint all over it, and you could use that to create little tiny drops of oil. So let's see how it came out. Here's my coaster. And I'm just gonna... drops of oil pop open and you get these gaps of color or gaps in the color I should say. Now again I'm going to let that dry for a bit and then I'm going to rinse it in um, some water. I like to use a bucket of water but you can use your sink or you can run it very gently under the faucet. You don't want to wash all the paint off when you're rinsing it. So that's how that process works. Again, um, use your own creativity, experiment with different products. See what happens when you try this process using different types of oil. Um, again, maybe nail polish might work for you. Glass paint if you have it, but glass paint you'll want to work outside because it has fumes. You can even use spray paint. Um, just work on a bigger area, take it outside, and spray uh, spray paint onto the surface of the water. And you can dip all kinds of things in there. So have fun, um, explore, use this time to um, see the beautiful things that maybe you never noticed before. I do hope you'll come and visit us at the My Use Silk Art Studio sometime. Take a look at our website. You can learn all kinds of things about the art there. It's www.myusilkart.com. And if you want to visit us or do our virtual um, studio visit where you can design and create your own hand-painted water marbled silk items, then go to www.myusilkart.com forward slash visit. And of course, I'll put all the links in the comments. Have a great day. Water marbling on silk requires specialized equipment and tools, but to, gosh diggity, he's hammering.